Oh, I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, no, I'm just kidding. No, it's fine. Okay, great. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and share this again. So, it is on the recording. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Taco Tuesday. Um, we are doing oral health today with Leslie and Andrea from CCHC. Um, sharing the screen. Um, hopefully you got this in your email. Um, if not, we can definitely forward it out to you. There is a new Facebook group um, called Healthy Littles. And this is to support uh, families and other caregivers of that zero to five age group. Um, so this will be a virtual newsletter um, that families and other caregivers can use. So there we go. Um, let's see. To kind of start our participation today, I'm going to do a poll. And there we go. How many times a day do you brush your teeth? And Elizabeth, sorry, if you see two uh, of my name, it's Maya A. Ana Rodriguez. I, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna end the poll. Is everyone voted that wants to vote? And we'll share the poll. Everybody brushes their teeth twice a day. <laughs> All right. Uh, oops, there we go. And then I have one more question. And hmm, maybe not. Maybe I don't have another question. <laughs> We're actually talking about earlier how we are all. Oh, there we go. Ha ha. All right. So the next question is, and select all that um, uh, that you want to. What else do you do to take care of your teeth? Go to the dentist, floss. You go to the dentist, oh, go to the dentist and floss. And I don't drink soda. Drink soda. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nancy. What was the question again? What do what, what do you do to take care of yourself or your team? Uh, your teeth. Hmm. This is iced tea. Not so. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was drinking tea while I was making this. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna end the poll. And I'm going to share the results. So 100% of you say that you go to the dentist once a year. 80% of you floss. 40% use a water pick. Mm -hmm. And 40% do not drink soda or pop. Awesome. Great. So hopefully that puts us in the right mindset for our presentation tonight. So go ahead and take it away. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Leslie, one of the CCHCs for Cochise County and this is Andrea, I'm gonna turn so she can say hi. We're gonna be presenting tonight and um, let me get my screen up. Here we go. Okay, and give me just a second. To, okay, so this is an 
empower standard. This is standard seven. And it's all about oral health in preschool age children. So um, standard seven is normally says provide monthly oral health care education or implement a toothbrushing program in the preschool. But right now we're not encouraging anybody to implement toothbrushing programs in preschools because of the pandemic. So we're just gonna talk mainly about providing monthly oral health care education for the kiddos. So who has heard this or thought this before? That baby teeth are going to fall out anyway, so it doesn't really matter whether you take care of them or not. Anybody come with that attitude? Not really? Okay, good. We all recognize that baby teeth are important. So, so why is oral health so important and why are healthy baby teeth so important? And there are several reasons for this. Um, children need to chew food well for their good nutrition. If they can't chew their food and they're not getting well nourished, they could have failure to thrive or become malnourished. Um, it can delay speech development if children's teeth aren't taken care of properly. Good teeth give kids good self-esteem. When they are experiencing problems with their teeth, kids can be, you know, the subject of teasing and it can really destroy their confidence. A child's primary teeth are very important and should be cared for properly, even though they are eventually replaced with permanent teeth. And it's important because the primary teeth hold space in the mouth until they fall out naturally. And permanent teeth begin to erupt at five or six years of age, but the last primary molar is not shed until the 12th to 14th year. Additionally, the development and care of the primary teeth give the child a healthy smile. And a child's smile can have an impact on how the child feels about the way he or she looks to others. So let's see. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to do that. Chewing, speech, self-esteem. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So how many of us have had a cavity? Andrea and Elizabeth are raising their hands. Johanna and Maria pretty much I will tell you a little fun fact about me. I've never had a cavity. And I thank my mother for that because she was a nurse and she was crazy about making me brush my teeth as a child. And I think that's carried over. <laughs> so, but by age 34, more than 80% of people have had at least one cavity. More than 40% of adults have felt pain in their mouth in the last year. On average, the nation spends more than $113 billion a year on costs related to dental care. And more than $6 billion of productivity is lost each year because people have to miss work to get dental care. So it starts out small, but it can morph into something huge if you're not careful. So how many of you have had a child with a cavity? <laughs> oh, poor babies. So in 37% in of Arizona children ages two to four have tooth decay in their baby teeth. And there are a few things that put people at greater risk for tooth decay. Um, coming from a low income family, having special health care needs, and this can include chronic physical, developmental, behavioral, or emotional conditions that require health and or related services of a type or amount that is beyond what is generally required for children. So, you know, any kind of, anything that's going on with the child puts them at greater risk for um, oral health issues if they have any kind of special need, you know. So tooth decay 
is the most common disease of childhood in the United States. It affects 17% of children by the time they are two to four years old. By the age of eight, approximately 52% of children have experienced decay. And by age 17, dental decay affects 78% of children. Tooth decay is more than twice as common for children living in poverty and is more prevalent among children in racial and ethnic minority populations and among those with special health care needs like we talked about. Among poor preschool age children, nearly 30% have untreated tooth decay compared with 6% of children living at 300% of the federal poverty level and above. High rates of tooth decay among children in the United States result in increased visits of increased risks of caries, which are dental cavities, in permanent teeth, hospitalizations, and emergency room visits, increased expenditures on dental health care, insufficient physical development from dehydration and under, undernutrition associated with chronic mouth pain, loss of school days, diminished capacity to learn, and lowered self-confidence and self image. And as you can see from the slide, this is the most common disease of childhood. It's five times more common than asthma to have tooth decay. So this is a healthy mouth. These are signs of early tooth decay. You can see a little bit of color change there in the photo. This is moderate tooth decay. You can see where there's some dark spots on the teeth and some of the teeth are misshapen. And this is advanced tooth decay. It's not pretty. So treatment of severe early childhood caries, which is what this is a picture of, can cost from $6,000 to $12,000 a child or more. First indications of tooth decay include white and chalky spots on teeth, often near the gum line. At this stage, the tooth decay process can be stopped if minerals like fluoride in drinking water and toothpaste are used on a regular basis and high carbohydrate foods and sugary drinks are limited in the child's diet. If early tooth decay is not addressed through brushing, fluoride exposure, and diet changes, it advances to eventually form a hole or cavity in the tooth. Once the tooth has a cavity or hole, the child must be treated by a dentist. If tooth decay is not treated, indicated by the dark tooth color, the resulting infection may spread to the nerves and blood vessels of the tooth. The decayed tooth can cause severe pain and the infection can spread to other parts of the body. This severe infection must be treated immediately. So this is a really sad story um, about Diamante Driver, who was 12 years old. Diamante Driver's tooth was bothering him. The same was the case for his younger brother, Deshaun, who needed six teeth extracted. Both boys from Maryland were at some points covered by Medicaid. At critical times though, they were dropped from the program because according to their mother, Alice, their paperwork may have been sent to a homeless shelter where they lived for a short time. Alice, who worked a variety of jobs over the years, didn't have insurance. Mary Otto, who first covered the story for the Washington Post, found the driver family after being contacted by Lori Norris, a lawyer for the Public Justice Center of Baltimore. Norris was helping Alice Driver navigate the dental system for Deshaun, making more than 20 calls in order to find a dentist that would accept Medicaid while Diamante became ill. After he was taken to the hospital to be treated for a headache, Diamante became sicker, eventually needing two brain surgeries. He died less than a month later in February of 2007. And so this shows the very real consequences of untreated tooth decay. So what causes tooth decay? Well, 
tooth plus bacteria plus sugar plus time. Dental plaque is a soft yellow white sticky film of bacteria, saliva, and food residuals found on teeth and gums that form on teeth every day. Though you may not be able to see dental plaque, you can feel it as a fuzzy layer on your teeth. Uses, it uses sugar from the foods we eat to form acids. If dental plaque is not removed daily through toothbrushing, the repeated acid attacks can cause tooth decay and irritate the gums. Daily brushing removes the plaque and helps keep teeth and gums healthy. There are several causes of tooth decay among American children. The combination of bacteria and the frequent consumption of foods such as sugar-coated cereal, cake, cookies, and any sticky sweets contribute to the risk for tooth decay. Baby teeth have a thinner layer of the outer enamel compared to adult teeth. That's why tooth decay happens much faster in young children than it does in adults. So there's a diagram of a tooth and it's just showing that kids have thinner enamel. So where does bacteria come from that lives in the mouth on teeth? It is actually transmitted from person to person. It's not present at birth and bacteria is usually transmitted to the baby by the age of three. The bacteria are transmitted from the mother or anyone who regularly cares for a baby or has and has had tooth decay. So tooth decay in baby teeth can cause pain and infection that in rare cases can be fatal as we've seen, can lead to malnutrition, dehydration, failure to thrive, and an increase in the amount of tooth decay in adult teeth. This can also cause impaired speech development and absence and inability to concentrate in school, reduced self-esteem, decreased school performance, and poor social relationships and less success later in life has all been linked to tooth decay. So, Another reason why oral health is important is because it is for development of the jaw bones and muscles of the face. Also, the baby teeth hold space for and guide adult teeth into proper positions, which happens until kids are about 12 years old. So permanent teeth begin to erupt at five or six years of age, as we said, but the last primary molar is not shed, shed until the 12th to 14th year. And the space maintainers are something, a device the dentist use is, is to hold space for permanent teeth. And this is a device that the child may need if he or she loses a baby tooth prematurely before the permanent tooth is ready to erupt. If a primary tooth is lost too early, adult teeth can erupt into the empty space instead of where they should be. When more adult teeth are ready to come into the mouth, there might not be enough room for them because of the lost space from the missing baby tooth. To prevent this from happening, the dentist may recommend a space maintainer to hold open the space left by the missing tooth. And finally, oral health is important because it, it can decrease school performance. There are 51 million school hours. Oh, I'm so sorry, my phone is going off. And it's spam, of course. But um, decrease, there are 51 million school hours missed per year due to oral disease. And it can also cause people to have poor social relationships and less success later in life. And with that, you guys are done listening to me and Andrea is going to take over and present the rest of this.
Hey guys, good evening. Thanks for chiming in. Nice to see you. Be nice to see you in person, but we'll take this for now. One day we'll be back in person. Um, so we're doing oral, oral health care um, for this topic. And what is February? Anybody knows? Oral health care month. Yay. So um, different things, you know, with the pandemic, um, we definitely have to change up the game. So um, teachers, you're a valuable support. Let me get there. And what are some of the things that you're doing right now to address oral health care? And you can unmute yourselves if there's anything. Honestly, um, because we're virtually not much. <laughs> Honestly, I am, but I would like to because I mean, and it's either um, it's also hard because, you know, once we're in person, you kind of, you know, you're interacting with the kids, you're talking to them, you could kind of, you know, see it in their smile. Yeah. And then we also have, you know, the, the hygienist go over for that fluoride and they're mm -hmm. able to, you know, give feedback to us or to the parents. But right now, honestly, nothing, <laughs> nothing so far besides hand washing. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. I, I wonder if you could, you know, just maybe in the morning, how many, how many of you guys brushed your teeth this morning before you started your class? Um, we were thinking for people that are actually in person, you know, the CDC doesn't recommend the oral health care programs right now, toothbrushing in the class, but maybe you could do like rinse with some water after each meal. Um, if the students return with the little Dixie cups, rinse and spit, I mean, that may get some sugar off their teeth. So that's just one thing that you could do. Or um, you could have the kids maybe in the morning time, show me your toothbrushes. Are your toothbrushes wet? Did you brush your teeth? That may be one other thing. Show me your beautiful smiles. And that truly is about it. I think that's as much created creativity as we can get at this point. But teachers are amazing. Um, and you're probably, sometimes the parents aren't observant. So you probably would be the first person that maybe noticed a cavity in the classroom. So hopefully we can So this that. is Nancy. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I, I don't have, I'm, on, I'm calling in. So I don't have a little hand raising thing. So I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. But we're virtual as well. But one of the things that I've recently done um, is a, a little oral health um, activity with my kiddos virtually. So they're at home, they get their toothbrushes, and we do the whole um, toothbrushing for two minutes, twice a day. Um, because previously, you know, when, when you guys would come to the centers when we were in person, um, you know, we'd talk about, you guys would talk about two minutes twice a day. So I was able to do that virtually, and it actually worked really well with the kids. Okay. Good idea. So how many of you talk um, about oral health care with your class? And we just went over that. And if you're not, um, I was trying to see if I can see the chat. If you're not doing that, maybe start, even if it's just like, you know, once a day, hey, show me your bright smile. The next day, show me your toothbrush, things like that. And maybe that will get them in the routine. And hopefully if the parents are listening, that's key. We know that's not often the, you know, uh, it's not often the case because sometimes it's a bigger sibling that's at home with the little kid because the parent's working, but just starting that reinforcement. Hey, let's brush your teeth. How often do we brush our teeth? Things like that. Um, so we were wondering, uh, as far as resources, normally we provide some like incentives during this uh, month. Would you guys like um, maybe some toothpaste and toothbrushes to go home with the kids? Um, we could, um, we'll sit out an email and see how many would like that. And we could get some packages. Now, you know, with Amazon, we probably won't have this done by the end of February, but maybe um, like March, spring into action with oral health care or something like that. So we can get that. So maybe that would be like a little reminder as well. That's an incentive that we can offer. And if you have anybody that's in person, we could probably um, most likely give you some Dixie cups and just do the swish and spit that may help as well. And um, we could also use this as an opportunity, you know, even show the kids, you know, you're going to get this goodie bag with the toothpaste and a toothbrush. You know, if you promise to brush your teeth twice, you know, make it into a little mini lesson when we're connected and say you're going to get whenever you come pick up, you know, your folder with your activities, you get to to take one of those home as well. So, Perfect. yeah. 
Yes, I see Elizabeth she raised her hand. Does that mean anything or no? Um, just oh, saying yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning the lingo. It's like when you text. Well, what is that? HMO mean or whatever, you know, is all those abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> so we can offer that. Um, here's a little activity that you probably could do on screen. It's the marshmallow. Um, it's the apple. And with the marshmallow, when you cut it, you still have, you know, residue on the knife. So that's something that's going to be sticky uh, for your teeth. But when you cut the apple, there's no residue. So those are just examples like... Um, I know kids like the crybaby candies or what's something that's sticky. Um, well, back in the day for me, it was like a now later, but I don't know if they really have those anymore. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that's sticky that's really bad for your teeth. Like the fruit gummies? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, that's those fruits. So those are things, so we could think of uh, things that have crunch, that are healthy. And I don't hear you, Joanna. Were you about to say something? I think she went back off again. How long should you brush your teeth for? And you can unmute to ask the question. Anybody, somebody, how many minutes? Two, right? Two. Perfect. And how many seconds on each side? 30. So 30 seconds. So, you know, one of the other things you could just even go through that process, as Nancy had mentioned, you know, set your timer for two minutes. Okay, we're going to brush your teeth. Let's do the top. Let's do the bottom. Let's do your tongue, things like that. And um, you want to do a circular motion on the top and outside in for the bottom. And if we can, I don't know if we would be able to get a model for each um, um, school, but we may be able to get like a big toothbrush and you say, hey, this is my toothbrush and this is what I'm gonna brush my teeth with. So we could do that. That's, that's one more way to step, out, step outside of the box. Again, these are just instructions and there's lots of activities online that you can find, even, um, Elmo, he's brushed his teeth with uh, the Jonas Brothers, <laughs> uh, Bruno Mars, <laughs> and uh, different ones. So there's different cute activities. And then the Sesame Street oral care, oral health care program, they have it where you can have, you help Elmo or no, the other monsters brush their teeth. So it's, it's a video game, actually, you know, and, you know, you have to brush the top, you have to brush the bottom. And then like the contestant, if they brush their teeth really well, they get like apples at the end. So that's something the parents could do as well. Or you guys could play it as a group. Um, these are just smile starts. Um, let's see, of course you can do what I'm trying to think of other links. I think if you just Google oral healthcare CDC, they have some really neat things. And there's a coloring book that we'll download and send to you guys as well, because that could be something. You could send home a color sheet, maybe once a month, just a reminder you know, for your brushing your teeth, things like that. And this is just an example as well. So, you know, Empower, of course, you know, we always would like to implement a toothbrush, toothbrushing program, but that's no longer the case. But again, if you're meeting in person, maybe just the rinse and spit. Um, if you're online, you know, we came up with some really good things, just practice with them brushing their teeth. That's about it. That's all we could probably offer besides sitting a toothbrush, toothpaste home. And maybe, I don't know if you guys have conferences with your um, parents, but just that's one area you could address. You know, hey, have you been to your local pediatrician? Um, when's the last time your kid has been to the dentist in a nice way? And so what are some things we want to do? We want to stop the spread. Um, you know, sippy cups. I've, I've seen, you know, many moms carry around their baby's bottle in their mouth or their sippy cup. What about the pacifier that drops on the floor? The mom picks it and she'll suck it off. Okay, here you go. You know, those aren't good things to do. Or the person that uh, pulls up the soda or the juice in their straw, and then they put the straw in the kid's mouth, 
feed their baby or give their baby the, the drink that way. So those are not good things we wanna do. And of course, we don't want kids going to sleep with a sippy cup, but at this age, three or four, hopefully we're not having too many sippy cups. But I have seen some pacifiers during three, you know, three-year-olds, big pacifiers are walking around with. I'm like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. So those are just different things. Um, like if you're feeding your baby off your spoon, again, that's when a parent would be giving the germs. So we don't wanna do that. Um, those just recommendations. Now you probably wouldn't say that online, but you know, if you're at a family barbecue and somebody's in your family, but like, hey, let's save some teeth here. Let's decrease the spread of bacteria in a nice way. And then, you know, some people are gonna tell you, I've been doing this for 1919 and Sally didn't get any cavities and I didn't get any cavities. And sometimes they're just gonna do what they're gonna do. Um, we recommend uh, no sleeping um, with bottles. Um, that's really important. Um, snack time, you know, all day, you know, eat your snacks earlier during the day, have a set plan. You know, some kids are just snackers or they suck their bottles off and on. And some parents tell you, well, that's the only way that Sally will fall asleep. So if we're dealing with infants, we want to, because we focus, we've been focused on the three and four year olds, but with infants, you can use a wet washcloth just to wipe their gums off in the morning and their gums off at nighttime. So that will decrease as well. So what do we do to stop the spread? We want to educate our parents, uh, don't share. We've talked about things like that. Um, what are some other, what are some ways we can educate parents? How about that? Because we know they should be educated, but what are some ways? I'm thinking maybe send some flyers or, you know, um, flyers or pamphlets um, in, their, in their folders when they collect, you know, when they pick up work. Okay. or send it through our class dojo like a little oh you know fun fact you know do not spread or something like little fun facts of the week or i don't know something for yeah them, for those them. are great ideas and um i think it's sesame street and me or something like that so with each participant tonight we will get the book sesame street books and those can go home to the parents and i believe they're actually in english and in spanish so we'll just have to know how many, and then we can send that out. Um, somebody said something in the chat. I have to look for it. Right there, yeah. Okay. Yes, agree. Videos, videos, great example. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make for sure we weren't mm -hmm. being in the chat. Yeah, so uh, Maria um, said videos and the videos. Agreed, yes. I think that's a good way to. Get like short little videos. Uh -huh. And then um, what we'll do, we'll offer each participant a oral health care storybook. I don't know if you guys do story time online, but that's another way you can as well. Okay, sounds good. And... Oh, sorry. Oh, this is fancy. Brush teeth at home. Um, first dentist appointment should be by H1. So if we have any participants that are online tonight and they have the infants, that's something that we should be promoting as well. Um, if you want more information, more resources, again, it's so many, so many resources out there. You can go to the Empower site, empower.com. If there's anything you would like for us to print off, a poster, anything let us know but we'll supply the books we'll get toothbrushes and toothpaste and if you can think of something else that you guys need you just let us know we're not millionaires but those things we can offer <laughs> um have an oral health policy so right now i mean you could have one but we probably wouldn't implement it due to the pandemic if you need one let us know um, we could do something, a reasonable goal, maybe um, info to families. Actually, I think quarterly would work. If you did one at the beginning of the school year, you did one in February because it's oral health care month. And then at the end of the year, because you know, these kids are gonna go on summer break and they're like, what's a toothbrush? I don't have time to brush my teeth. I gotta play outside. But those would be three opportune times that we could educate. 
Um, let's see, don't share a take home message. Don't share food or utensils. Don't let your baby go to sleep with a bottle. Don't carry around sippy cups. And as, as far as like juice, you know, limit the intake, things like that. Um, educate parents, educate, educate, which you guys do an awesome job of doing that. Is there anything else? Any other questions for us? And you guys are awesome and thank you for listening and we'll get some resources out to you. Fantastic, thank you, Andrea and Leslie. That is really good. And um, I'm really cool to get all these resources out there. So before we go, I want everybody to go get one snack that is good for your teeth and one snack that is bad for your teeth. <laughs> or we should say not so good for your teeth. <laughs> All I've got is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So um, we can do like one minute. You think one minute will be good? All right, so great. I'll set my timer for one minute and we'll do that. There we go. Great, I'll see you. Ah, I raided my daughter's candy jar. <laughs> All right, everybody back. Give me a thumbs up. Turn your camera on. Fantastic. All right, I'll go first because I love to embarrass myself. Um, so I got an apple because apples are great um, for it's a good healthy snack and good for your teeth. And I got I rated my kids candy jar and I got a ring pop, but mm. not a good one. And this one is I think even. A, watermelon oh yummy <laughs> i was actually surprised there wasn't any um gummies in there because <laughs> gummies yeah so who would like to go next we can go next excellent <laughs> <laughs> oh we have our bat snacks bat. here at, at the health department <laughs> i have thin mints <laughs> and i have <laughs> Heart hearts. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, how funny. Yeah. As a Girl Scout mom, I totally support Thin Mints. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Who yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would like to go next? Go ahead. I'll go. So I also got an apple for a healthy snack. And I got for, not that it's unhealthy, but I guess it's bad for your teeth. Um, they're dried cranberries, but they always stick to my teeth. Maybe it could be because I have braces or anyone that doesn't wear braces. If you've eaten dried cranberries and they stick to your teeth, let me know. <laughs> but with me, apple, anything sticks to my teeth because I have braces. But um, they stick like even on my molars. So I'm, you know, so red cranberry stick on my teeth, but the apple. <laughs> that is actually a really great example um, because dried fruit, um, while like it's something I recommend um, for families to keep on hand, it can be high in sugar and it is sticky. 
um, and that residue does stay on the teeth. Um, so that's a perfect example. Great, thank you. Thank you, and I love thin mints as well for Girl Scout. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I actually have a pack right now. <laughs> yeah. Girl Scout cookies have been my go-to. Like, oh yeah, it's just not good. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Who's next? This is Nancy. Hey, Nancy. I have cucumber. Hi, I have cucumber slices and Oreo cookies. Oh, good. So, Super yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And cucumbers are an awesome snack, too, because they're also very hydrating. So um, not only are they good for your teeth, but they are good for a lot of reasons. Thank you. Okay. I can go next. I actually the same as uh, Nancy, some cucumbers, <laughs> and then a pack of uh, cookies. Oh, okay. Those are delicious. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Anna, do you want to go? Sure. I have an apple and my favorite candy are red vines oh, and they yeah. do tend to stick Ooh, on my yeah. teeth. <laughs> they're Excellent. my favorite but they do stick on my teeth yes thank you, you. <laughs> they are sticky <laughs> <laughs> and and maria did you yes yeah, so i grabbed a carrot nice. and i didn't have any candies i'm not a huge fan of candies but of soda <laughs> ah yes yes exactly good mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. These are all like perfect examples. Um, and I love that. Thank you. So before we sign off, um, any questions or um, any other like, because I love Nancy's uh, suggestion, um, what she's doing in the classroom, um, any other suggestions um, or maybe some ideas that popped up while we were talking tonight? But I'm, I'm definitely gonna gonna start, you know, promoting it while we're live. As, you know, a few minutes, fast minute, you know, like Andrew was saying or Nancy, like who has brushed their teeth today mm -hmm. or show us brush just to start, or even and, and even go on from there, like who has drank water today? You know, adding other other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. definitely, yes, yes. I love that. And as a parent who's putting their kid on in the morning, um, I have to say, like you know, like there's a lot of mornings where you're just like, go oh, get on the computer. Like, and so I think that would be a really um, great way to connect with the kids first thing, um, because there are probably some mornings that Hannah's gotten on class and hasn't brushed her teeth yet. Um, so I honestly, like even beyond like our early childhood centers, like when they're for elementary school as well, just across the board. So I love that idea of bringing that up in the morning. All right, anything else? All right, well, you all are super quick tonight. Yeah, this is, this is Nancy. I yeah. like the idea of doing little like science experiments with them online. I didn't think about that. Like, you know, um, taking a fork and stabbing a marshmallow with it. What happens to the fork? You know, the residue stays on the teeth. I mean, what a great way to show them you know, with certain foods, what it does to your teeth and how it stays on your teeth. For sure. Mm -hmm. That is a good idea. So you had some really nice ideas from tonight. Different There's, things you can do. There are. And if you, if, speaking of science, there was something that I, um, I think Maria might have done this with me. Um, we did it with older kids, but it would be great to share to preschoolers. Um, we take eggs and put them in different drinks um, for about 24 hours. Um, so you can put them in um, like soda. I put them in an energy drink, um, sweet tea, um, all the different things that, you know, we all like to drink and then one in just water. Um, and <laughs> then you pull them out and they're so gross, especially the energy drink one. Um, no. really ate the shell. It made it really like gelatinous. No. Um, so 
that could be a really interesting experiment that you could do um, at home and show the kids, like actually do it in front of them, like look, we're pouring these things in. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow we'll find out what happens. <laughs> um, but it is really, um, it leaves a very obvious impression on kids because they really get to see like what happens with that eggshell. Um, so that's fun. <laughs> yeah. There are lots of videos out there um, that are good for both um, adults and kids. Those are always fun. Mm -hmm. really, really cute ones too. Yeah, yeah, super cute videos. Because I thought it was cute when uh, Elmo was singing with Bruno Mars about rushing. I love that. That takes it to a different level. Yeah, I'm going to have to find that. <laughs> yes, it's on YouTube. Yes. Elmo was a very crucial part of, uh, of all, the, all the good habits growing up. So. I know. I just love Elmo. <laughs> He's so relatable. Mm -hmm. He probably could talk me out of my debit card because he sounds so nice. Yeah, you need to give it to me. It's Elmo's, you know. I'm like, here you go. Okay, you can use it. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm trying to think of any other. I love the marshmallow idea because that's something that kids really like to eat. Eat. Um, so I love that. I'm trying to think if I can think of any. I think they had one where you could. Um, you had like a post, poster board, use a dry erase marker and put different things on their teeth. And then mm. you could, let's brush the cavity away or something like that. Mm -hmm. and brush, it, brush it away. That could be something else. Mm -hmm. Actually on a dry erase board, that would be cool. Cause mm -hmm. it's in person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, I was gonna comment that um, I, I worked in the preschool and we did a nutrition activities. And we obviously we had to pick something that was nutritious and um, you know healthy, but even linking the toothbrushing with that nutrition experience. And I remember doing like a slice of apple, giving like the, the split um, almond, and those would be play as the teeth, and they would stick them in there. And so after doing like oh. a brush, but kind of putting the two experiences together, the, the nutrition factor plus the brushing, finding a it, that connected both. Uh, so I remember doing, and then like one of the things was, for example, um, like doing experience, like who likes certain vegetable, you know, like tasting them and everything, but maybe connecting if it has to do with tooth, uh, teeth brushing or toothbrushing. Uh, mm -hmm. I like that because we often talk about nutrition in my part of the world and um, and one of the you know reasons is oral health, right? Like that is one of the the reasons for it. But actually connecting that in the student's mind um, is I like I like that idea. So like a little apple slice smile mm -hmm. with almonds. Mm -hmm. um, kind of help. These are healthy snacks, and they're good for your teeth, and they look like little yeah. teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Good visual learners. Yeah, oh, for sure. Fantastic. All right. Anyone else? It's been a blast, guys. It's been fun, interactive, and I would like yes. that we learn from everyone. Yes, that's what I love about this. <laughs> yeah. So next month, um, we're going to have our community resources and um, family engagement. Um, and we have um, some really awesome guest speakers. Martha is going to speak as well. Um, and um, it's gonna, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, so Wick is going to be here, Martha, and um, the Birth to Five Hotline. And so those are all resources that our families and our uh, preschools can use. So sure. fantastic. Yep. 
the spread the word let all, <laughs> and I will send out um, the survey and the certificate um, and I'll also send out the recording because I know there's a few um, teachers that want to be here but their school board meetings are tonight um, so we'll make sure that we get them in so they can see everything all right well fantastic thank you all for your Tuesday evening and I will see you next month if not before Good night. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.